Hey there, welcome to another SVJator tutorial. My name is Matt, and today we're gonna to be learning about how to create this really cool spinning basketball animation. Why don't we just stick to the animation, shall we? <laughs> Diving into our project here, obviously on your screen, you just have a blank canvas, but uh, I've left in this little basketball character just for some visual interest. We're not going to animate any part of him today. What we're really interested in is just animating the spinning basketball. So what we want to do is start off with an ellipse tool, very ellipse shape. And I want that to be, let's go 95 by 95. Boom. And let's move that over top of the finger like so. And let's change that color to kind of that classic basketball. Maybe a little bit on the redder side, just so it pops a little bit more. Boom. I think, yeah, perfect. I like that. Feel free to create any color or choose any color you want there. I'm going to call this one basketball. Boom. Got it. All right. Now I want to create a duplicate. So I can hit Command D or Control D on my keyboard, or I can right click, go copy paste. Duplicate. All right. So now I have basketball. Oh. And let's call this one clipping path. Move that up above. And we want our clipping path. Let's go ahead and make it black. All right. And we can, we're not going to use this for a little while. So let's close that up, turn the eyeball off, get back to our basketball shape. What we need to do is create another duplicate of that. So we're going to do Command D. And this one is going to be the start of our detail work with inside the basketball. So this is going to be our seam or one of our seams. And what we need to do is switch this to a stroke. We're going to go with a darker, kind of that darker leather, maybe even a little bit more red. There we go. Darker leather. Um, and I want my stroke to be two points, two points there. And I want it to be smaller than the original ball. So I'm going to go 85 right there. Let's go ahead and put our origin source in the middle. And then let's select both of our layers here so we can align it vertically and then align it horizontally. All right. So the ball should be aligned with inside of each other, like so, the circles. And now what we need to do is move this one to the left, maybe like so. And if I'm holding the Alt key or Option key, I can click and drag out a duplicate and move it to the right, something like that. All right, we'll get it centered up later. Now what I want to do is add my vertical line. So I want to do my vertical line. And the trick here is it can be challenging to create a line that is perfectly vertical. And so the trick is hold the shift key as you are creating that line, and that will keep you on that vertical, straight vertical axis. And so I can let go of that. That's great. I'm going to now come to my color, and I want to grab the same color that's in my stroke. Perfect. I want to create this. As two points, getting that dialed in. I think this maybe one is a little bit too far out, and we can move this line a little bit to the right until we are just about center. Cool. I like that. I think that feels good. So now I can grab both of these. Actually, I want to lock this basketball layer because I don't want to move it anymore. I'm going to grab these lines and we can center it up a little bit on that basketball. Doesn't have to be centered, but I don't know. That looks pretty good right about there. I like that. So this part is a little bit tedious, but once we get this detail work created, then I promise we're going to get into the animation itself. We're going to start keyframing. So bear with me. So now what we want to do is we want to grab this layer, move it down, and we want to make sure we grab all of our seams. Now again, holding the Alt key, 
I can drag out more duplicates. And what I'm trying to do is line it up perfectly on that last circle. I don't need two copies of it on the same circle, so I can get rid of one of those duplicates. Perfect. Again, I'm going to hand tool and I'm going to move that out. I'm going to grab these, duplicate them. So holding the Alt key again, drag out copies until I get it to line up. Perfect. Get rid of one of those. Again, I'm going to use my hand tool. I'm going to come this way and I'm going to drag out using the Alt or Option key as I'm dragging to line up. I like that, how that looks. Gonna get rid of one of those. We're gonna do this one more time and I think we should be good. So I select all of these and I'm gonna, yeah, select those. Holding the Alt or Option key, drag out some more copies until I line up right there. Get rid of that last one. Boom, cool. So that should be good. I've just created a series of these same seams and that's looking good. It totally depends on how much you want to spin your basketball and how fast. If you want more revolutions for your spinning basketball, then you're going to have to create more copies. So your line of copies is going to be longer. All right. Before we get too carried away, though, let's go ahead. We're forgetting our horizontal seam. So I can duplicate this layer this line here. So again, Command D. I'm going to rotate it. Again, I'm holding the Shift key as I'm rotating it, and that will rotate it in increments. That's helpful for me. So now I know for sure that it's perpendicular to that vertical line. I'm going to extend this out this way. Put my source over here on the left, because now I want to expand this line all the way through my circles, just like that. And I want to make sure my scale stays the same. So I want to keep it at one. And then I want that can be fine. We can leave that there just as long as it goes from one end to the other, like it does. So let's make sure we're good. We're good. We're good. OK, cool. So we have all of our detail set up. All of our detail work is here and is looking really messy over here on our layers. So let's go ahead and select all of those. We're going to go here and we're going to go group or you can hit command or control G. Create a group of those. Let's call them seams plural. We got our seams. Last thing we need to do to our ball here is we want to add a shadow. So if I click with my pen tool, Click, create that nice curve following the curve of the ball, and then close it up. It doesn't have to be super pretty. We're going to clip that rest of it off here in just a moment. I'm going to switch this to the fill, and I want to grab that same color, my stroke. Cool. I like that color. It's going to work well, but I don't like how it's um, covering the detail work. So all I need to do is just lower that opacity. I'm going to go with like a 35. Excellent. Next, oh, yes, it's great. Let's call it shadow. Boom. All right, we got our shadow. Let's move that below the seams layer. Let's go ahead and unlock our clipping path because we are about to do a clipping path maneuver here, which is super fun. I always enjoy these. So selecting all these layers, let's we have our shadow seams and clipping path. Let's go ahead and right click. We'll go create clipping path. And voila, it's like magic. I love it. It's so satisfying every time. So what's happening is we created a clipping path of these layers. So only what's um, visible with inside the clipping pass is showing up. So everything outside of that basketball shape is getting clipped out. And so that sets us up great for our animation. If I click on my seams, I can go ahead and create a position keyframe. All right, so I have my position keyframe and I can start there. 
I can move down to that four second mark on my timeline. And all I'm going to be doing is moving my horizontal, so my seams detail to the left. And again, if I click and move it, if I hold the shift key, it's going to stay on that same horizontal plane. So I can't move it vertically up and down. It's just going to stay on that same plane. And what I want to do is end it about right where I started it. And so we go back here. So shift it just a little bit. Go back to the start. Boom. That is going to be close enough. All right. So if we just play this, <laughs> how cool is that, right? Looking great. We've already created that illusion. So a 2D, it's looking 3D because we have our shadow there. We're just moving the, the simple geometric shapes through this clipping path. But because that shadow gives us a little bit of dimension, it makes us feel like a sphere, like a basketball, which is great. It's exactly what we want. Cool. What we need now is just a little bit of easing. So I can click here and maybe I want to do a little bit of ease in out sign. So if in your animation, let's say this hand goes up and hits the basketball, swings it around, it speeds up and starts to slow down. And you could create that seamless looping animation. And so obviously, if you wanted to, you could add more keyframes in here to manipulate. Uh, maybe you want it to slow down or speed up at different intervals or things like that. So you could add different keyframes in here to manipulate. And all you would be doing is just moving your seam either faster this way. So the faster you move it this way, the faster that ball's gonna spin, or if you move it back this way, it's gonna spin a little bit slower from the start. So let's try this again. Start slow, then it speeds real fast, then it goes back to kind of going slow. All right, so a bunch of different ways you can manipulate that, but I think that's looking pretty cool. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select this layer and this layer, and I'm going to unlock this one, and I'm going to group these, Command G. And I want to call this basketball. And the reason why I want to group all of the basketball layers in there is if at some point I wanted to, I could manipulate the rotation of the basketball. So say, this arm dropped down a little bit or something, I could rotate, oops, let's make sure our origin is right there where it sits on the finger. And I could then rotate the basketball a little bit. And then maybe I want it to rotate back. So if that finger were moving at all, you would get that cool rotation. And you could manipulate this basketball so it follows the same path of this arm if there are any kind of animation going on with that arm. So that's great. So we have now, we've created our spinning basketball. Well, good deal. Hope you guys enjoyed that. All right, that about wraps it up for this SVJater tutorial. I hope you've all enjoyed that. Keep in mind that there's a number of ways that you can use this effect. Check out some of SVJader's examples like the spinning can design. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool that you can fake 3D by moving a 2D graphic through a clipping path like we've already learned how to do. Really, the sky's the limit for you all. And so I look forward to seeing what you come up with. And until next time, take care, keep animating.